The following program was produced by an independent community producer. The opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the QATV staff or board of directors. QATV, in compliance with FCC regulations, is prohibited from exercising control over the content of independent, member-produced public access programming. Welcome. This is Stop Healthcare Violence. My name is Sheila Wilson. I'm a registered nurse with a bachelor's degree in nursing and a master's in public health. Tonight I'm going to introduce two special guests, but before I do that, I just want to mention a few things. The violence is escalating. The violence against healthcare workers. When we decided to make this business stop healthcare violence back in 2009, there was three things we wanted to mention. One of them was to educate and inform the public of all of the violence that was happening against healthcare personnel. The second thing was to provide support and advocacy for our victims. Once you get assaulted, it changes your whole lifestyle. And the third thing is to lobby for legislative change. Presently, the Massachusetts law has a misdemeanor in place if you assault a health care worker. We could change that to a felony if we had enough support, but that's, that's at another time. Let me introduce Susie Berg, who is a lifestyle coach, certified lifestyle coach, and Liz Dalton, who is also a registered nurse with a bachelor's degree. Welcome both of you. Thank and you it's a Sheila. pleasure to Thank have you, you here. So Thank you. Thank you for inviting us onto the show. Um, I'm really happy to know um, more about this issue and the work you're doing is really commendable and thank you so much for your leadership. Thank you. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Dalton. I'm also a registered nurse for 24 years and um, I experienced a assault at my job and currently um, I suffer from PTSD and depression and anxiety and um, since that time that that happened I also suffered with my health and um, I'm very interested to find out from you Susie what are things that we can do not even just nurses but regular folks at home that um, moms, dads, grandparents, students and um, people particularly that have experienced trauma on how to start to heal their lives. So I'd like to find out about this myself and I'm sure people at home would love to find out about this as well because we do hear it a lot in on the internet and in the media about a certified lifestyle coach which I really don't know a lot about. So um, can you tell us exactly what is a certified lifestyle coach? Sure. Um, so I help people um, improve their physical and mental health with the goal of preventing disease and helping them live a longer, happier life. Um, so I came into this program uh, three years ago uh, wanting to lose weight before my son's wedding. And uh, I worked alongside a coach um, like, like myself um, who guided me through the program and helped me learn how to get rid of my unhealthy habits and create new healthy habits. Um, I decided to pay it forward to others and become a coach uh, shortly after um, being successful in losing the weight and I learned the tools to keep the weight off now for three years. So um, I really like to be authentic and compassionate as I work alongside people holding their hand along their health journey. I think that's amazing because you have empathy for the other person because you're not just a person instructing someone but you've actually been through it yourself. Exactly. So 
that's more powerful. People can relate to that on a personal level, you mm -hmm. know? I definitely could if I had someone like that to help me. Um, I know that um, there's a lot of unhealthy habits that people have, but I know you talk a lot about healthy habits. And um, could you explain some of these areas that you're referring to? Sure. About um, healthy habits. Sure. Uh, so improving our overall health and well-being relies on combining habits in all of the following areas. Um, the first area, which many people like to begin at, is weight management. Uh, the second uh, that goes along with that is healthy eating and hydration, healthy motion, our sleep routines and habits, our mindset and our thoughts. Mm. That's probably the most important one that people have to improve on and really work hard at. Exactly. Um, we're all a work in progress, so we're all working all the time on that one. Um, and so our surroundings, making sure our environment is healthy. Not only the physical environment, but um, you know, who we hang out with, you know, who's around us that can support us. Right. Um, so I suggest, you know, if you are, are thinking about these different habits and which one you would start with, you know, they're all really good habits to uh, work on. Um, but I suggest starting with one uh, that you'd like to improve on and break it down into small manageable steps. Uh, too many resolutions fall by the wayside because people take on too much at once and they make unrealistic goals. So if you can break it down into a small, manageable step, very small, like embarrassingly small, you know, just, you know, two minutes, literally do something for two minutes. I mean, with eating and hydration, it's a little different, but um, let's say with the example of motion. Most people this month, you know, bought gym memberships and thought they were gonna go to the gym, you know, mm -hmm. three times a week for an hour at a time. It's just it's too much at once, you know, really just driving to the gym right? and then just coming home. <laughs> I can relate to that. Is the best way to start. Um, yeah, so the key in building new habits is really just starting extremely small, being consistent and repetitive. And then when you feel like you have mastered that small change, then you can build on it and uh, add more. That's great because I also am guilty of saying I'm going to do all these things and then I come back to myself and I can't even go through the first step because I've put too much pressure on my head, um, too much expectation, and I want so many things to be better. But I think that makes sense to start at one small important thing that you can accomplish. You know? Absolutely. So I, you know, being a nurse that also suffers from PTSD, and um, there are a lot of people that suffer from PTSD for different traumas and um, in anxiety as well. In many cases, their families um, don't have the tools to understand how to help um, these people. What can you say that could help them to better understand what the person is going through? Mm -hmm. Well, many of us find ourselves in complex situations. Um, there's many things in our life that we can't control, uh, whether it being a life event, um, accidents happen, uh, we, we could have been unfairly hurt, in this, you know, which yes. you can relate to, uh, or even our heredity. You know, there's just things just beyond our control. So what I think um, can really help is to, and what we're really going to talk about today, is focusing on what we can control. There's so many things that we really can control in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, so it doesn't matter, you know, how old you are, uh, how much medicine you've been on, or where you've been in the past. You can always make the decision to improve today and just make that decision to make, you know, tiny changes one at a time. Mm -hmm that can really create a new life for yourself, a whole new future. Uh, it's just really making that decision. It's just yeah. saying yes, yes to yourself, 
and uh, taking that tiny step forward. Um, oftentimes, you know, if you have an ac accountability partner or a coach helping you along, uh, it, it's a lot easier. You know, it just takes that pressure off of yourself that you have someone to do it with. Yeah, and it's someone like a to friend, help you. But a friend that has complete focus on how they can help you. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in your personal health and, and mental fitness. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about um, installing habits. So we've we've gone years and sometimes decades uh, with these same habits. You know, whether they're healthy habits or unhealthy habits, but they're very ingrained in our brains. Um, you can think of it like a, um, a well-worn pathway, you know, in a dirt road. Um, so many cars have gone over that pathway, or you can, you know, use the analogy in our brain that we've repeated that habit so many times in that our brain, it, it's just so automatic for us to do that habit. So the same is true with new habits. Um, we need to create uh, those pathways um, and actually um, science has shown, sci scientific um, studies have been done in the field of neuroscience um, that have shown uh, that our brains can be molded, that they are flexible much more than we ever thought that they were. Uh, and so we are capable of change. Yeah. And uh, it's just a matter of, um, as I said, taking those small steps, um, but you can actually create new neural pathways in your brain. So everybody can do it. Um, and when we, when we change our day-to-day -day habits, we feel better f physically and mentally. Uh, we have more energy throughout the day, you know, when we're we're going to talk about you know eating properly, hydrating ourselves properly, getting enough sleep. Uh, those are the, the areas we're going to focus on today. Um, and when you take care of yourself physically, you do feel better, and you do and you feel better mentally. You feel good about yourself. Um, you t have more confidence. Mm -hmm. You know that you're doing something for yourself. Self care is really important. And you know when you talk about healing the healer. Yes. Um, it's really uh, important to focus on ourselves and just in our day-to-day -day lives there's so many steps we can take which we're I'm gonna go through some practical tips well, that's great because I find myself that um, and there's many people I believe out there that are caretakers and caretakers are known to not take care of themselves they're worried about everyone else around them and myself um, I developed a lot of bad health habits and um, I just found out that I'm adult onset diabetes which was relate is related to my diet and related to my activity level and um, I'm a <coughs> nurse I know a lot I'm a cardiac nurse but I still haven't been able to care for myself you know um, so my next question is um, what are the first areas of habits we can focus on? Mm -hmm. So uh, the first area that I'd like to go through is um, just our eating. Um, that that's tends to be uh, a difficult area for many. Um, stress often triggers emotional eating. Mm. Um, it can be mindless. You know, you're just uh, in that habit or you're just, you don't know really, you're not really thinking about it. You're just grabbing and eating. Um, and it's really a reaction. Yeah. So by uh, creating more mindfulness and structure throughout your day, uh, you can um, eat in a better way um, that will take off weight uh, rather than you know continue to put it on, and it'll just make you feel better and have more energy throughout the day. So th our first, uh, my first tip is eating six times a day, small portion controlled meals. Uh, what this does is it not only keeps us full for, you know, a, a period of time, um, you know, eating every two to three hours uh, keeps our metabolism moving and, yeah. and increases our metabolism. And our blood sugar level. That's the last thing I was going to say. Right. Exactly. It keeps the blood sugar, sugar level leveled off um, and stable. 
Um, so uh, also planning is key. Mm -hmm. So planning uh, what you're going to eat throughout the day, you know, spending a few minutes planning is going to lead to more success. Uh, what we, I'm sure you've heard this, but um, failing to plan is planning to fail. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> so what I've learned through this program um, is that uh, uh, meal prep is really uh, crucial, just taking some time the night before or you typically not in the morning because everybody's right. in a rush. But uh, spending some time either, you know, on, on a Sunday, you know, a couple hours meal, meal prepping can really go a long way. Um, and, you know, making sure you have healthy snacks with you. Because if you don't have the healthy snacks with you, you're just going to go to the vending machine or you're going to grab the donuts in the break room. And, exactly. uh, you know, but if you have a plan and writing it down has a great effect on making it concrete, um, almost have an accountability with yourself right. that you wrote it down, it's your plan, right. and now you need to follow that plan. It just leads to more success. Uh, and the other interesting, um, interesting strategy, um, we have a graphic for that, is uh, our nine inch plate. Uh, so mm -hmm. the healthy plate strategy mm -hmm. is um, First of all, you're supposed to use a 9-inch plate, not a 10 or 11 or 12-inch plate. Uh, and then you divide it into four quarters, um, making sure that half of your plate is filled with fruits and vegetables, and the other uh, one quarter is your protein, mm -hmm. the size of your fist typically is what we say. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the starch is the other quarter. Um, you know, t if you think about what you normally do with your plate, not you, but in general. No, I, can, I definitely <laughs> used to do, you know, carbohydrates here and the protein over here and the vegetables in a smaller. Right. So I, I did learn that from Weight Watchers as well, but mm -hmm. it's, um, it's the way we really should look at it, you know? Yes, absolutely. And it's an easy, easy thing to remember. Um, just fill that half of the plate with the fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. you know, heavy on vegetables and, you know, just make those other other um, portions smaller. But it's an easy way to portion control. Okay, a lot of people these days, because they live very busy lives, or um, they haven't food prepped, um, gotten ready for things, and they're on the, the go. Um, as far as eating out, okay, what tips do you have for staying healthy while you're eating out? Mm -hmm. or Mom's, mm -hmm. dad's, family's on the road, trying to stay healthy. Right. Well, the first s tip that I have is to go online. Every, almost every restaurant has the menu online. So just go check it out. Make sure that they have on the menu something healthy for you to choose. Um, typically, you know, you can find a salad with grilled, grilled salmon or grilled chicken on top. Um, you can find, you know, a piece of fish or a piece of chicken with vegetables on the side. Typically it comes with rice or a baked potato and you can ask the server just to uh, take that off and put more vegetables on your plate. I've right. done that and it, it really, you know, they, they're very accommodating. Um, the other thing is when you first go to the restaurant, uh, be the first one to order your food. You, you looked at the menu ahead of time, you go in with a plan, mm -hmm. you know what you're going to get, and so be the first one to place your order, because then you'll set the tone for the rest of the table. Maybe the rest of the table was planning on getting something unhealthy, but when they hear that you've ordered something healthy, you may sway their opinion and they may say, yeah, you know, that salad with chicken sounds great. That's really cool because when I've been out in the past with friends, we'll say, what are you going to get? And what, what are you going to get? So I think ordering first, that's a great tip mm -hmm. to, you know, I, you know, just thinking about it is mm -hmm. right. And when I've said, like, I'll have chicken with the Caesar salad or whatever, some will say, oh, that does sound good. So I'll go with that instead of that burger with fries, you know? Yep. Um, yep. And you can also, when, when you're... Uh, when your plate comes, you can ask the server to just bring you a doggy bag at the beginning of the meal. And, you know, depending on 
what size it is, typically they give you more than you really should eat in a sitting. Yes. Um, so you can just right away put it into that doggy bag. And therefore, when it's out of sight, out of mind, you have right in front of you what you're going to eat. Yeah, and I see a lot of smart people doing that. You know, Do you? well, you know, I grew up in that time when your mother said you wanted, you should eat everything on your plate. So, but it is good to save some of that food because it is overwhelming. Mm -hmm. To so that you could have it for to the next day for lunch or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. um, what is the next habit um, we can focus on? Well, that would be hydration. Uh, staying hydrated has many purposes. Uh, so it keeps your organs working properly. Um, it flushes toxins out of your body. It keeps your energy level up. It helps with your skin, especially in, our, in these winter months when we're so dry. Right. It just keeps you hydrated and keeps you feeling healthy and it protects our joints. And it actually keeps our, our metabolism uh, working, working properly. And it regulates our body temperature. Um, the other uh, tips I have around hydration, uh, what, we, what you already know is that you should have eight glasses of water mm -hmm. every day, mm -hmm. 64 ounces. Um, so for some, that can be really daunting. Uh, you know, if someone's only used to drinking two or three glasses of water, how do you get in? Eight. Right. So uh, what I like to recommend is, first of all, I'm going to pull up my prop. This is my water bottle. It's 24 ounces. And so I recommend getting um, a water bottle that you really like, mm -hmm. that's fun to drink out of. Yeah. And when you fill up a larger water bottle, you're much more apt to go through it. Yes. Um, now you may wonder why I have these uh, rubber bands here. Mm -hmm. You're probably wondering. Um, so, uh, well, actually it, it, would work, it would work better on an eight ounce bottle. Mm -hmm. um, no, wait, sorry. Uh, 16 ounce. The 16 ounce, like the Poland Spring bottle? Yes. That's what the four would be for. But um, basically, uh, how are you going to know what number you're on of filling it up? So you put on four rubber bands, and after you've, you know, finished it, you take one off. Now you know you have to fill it three more times. Each time you fill it, you take another rubber band off. And it's just a good way to keep track That's of cool. how many times you've filled it up. If you're the type of person that you just want to have all your water with you all, all at once, so then pack four water bottles. Yeah. You know, um, and this is 24, but um, you know, if you have the 16 ounce bottles, um, you know, take four with you. Or, or um, you know, if we want to care about the environment, we're going to have the reusable water bottles. Um, so you know, have have four different ones. You know, and fill them all up. Have them in the fridge. Um, you know, I was saying pack them up if you're going to work, but if you work from home or you're just at home, um, have them ready to go in the fridge so mm -hmm. that you have them all lined up and you know you need to get through all of them. Yeah. Another really good tip is to pair habits together. Mm -hmm. When we stack habits, we're much more apt to um, remember to do them. So uh, when you're eating six times a day, let's mm -hmm. say, each time you eat a small snack, make sure you drink some water with it. That way, if you know you're eating six times a day and you're drinking at each time, chances are you're going to get in your 64 ounces. If you pair the habit together, then you'll remember to drink. Right. Setting alarms is great. Uh, you know, you can set an alarm uh, several times a day, as many times as you want throughout the day. And it can just say, drink more water. <laughs> Very so you're good. literally reminding yourself. It's kind of that accountability that you're setting up for yourself. Yeah. It's very empowering too. Yeah. To, you know, you're empowering yourself to help yourself. Yeah. And the young people are into these. Now this was a great commodity at the holidays. Parents buying their children these these wonderful water water bottles. Mm -hmm. And so that was a great selling point too, but it it's a healthy habit. Mm -hmm. You know? Absolutely. Um, I'd like to get into another habit mm -hmm. that's definitely a problem for me. Um, it's been, for the last four years, I've had this problem with sleep. Mm -hmm. Sleep is a challenge for many people who have experienced trauma particularly. What advice can you give to help for um, people that need help in this area? Mm -hmm. uh, so when you pay more attention to your nutrition throughout the day, you're more likely to sleep better at night. Um, with that said, 
Uh, there are a number of tips that we can come up with um, to create a twilight hour for yourself. Um, what I find helps, uh, helps my clients is to, first of all, set up your bedroom so that it's uh, really just for sleep. Um, you know, you mm -hmm. can relax in the hour before, before you're going to bed, uh, but try not to make it your uh, grand central station of your house. Mm -hmm. um, you know, definitely avoid eating in, in bed. Um, it's, it's not a good habit yeah. to get into. Um, but also uh, have the same uh, sleep time, bedtime, and the same time that you wake up. Try to keep it very similar, even on the weekends. Um, it just helps our circadian rhythm mm -hmm. to, uh, to just be on a routine. Um, you'll be more apt to fall asleep um, if you have a, a set, set number of hours that you know you're gonna get. Like an internal clock. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so then, you know, an hour before bedtime, uh, wind down. You know, have a time where you're gonna wind down, you're gonna put your phone away, um, or you can, you know, re reduce the uh, brightness on your phone just mm -hmm. to keep the, and you know, turn the lights down, um, whatever room you're in. Try to keep the lights low and uh, just, you know, have it be a relaxing time. Just mm -hmm. have there be some bridge between the hectic day yeah. and all the th responsibilities that you have. Uh, and then, you know, have that be uh, a little bridge time where you're going to just um, you know, wind down and mm. relax. Yeah. Uh, then you'll be more apt to fall asleep um, and hopefully stay asleep. Right. It's like a sacred place. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Um. Oh, the the one other thing I wanted to mention is that when we don't get adequate sleep, it's actually there's a physiological connection between not getting enough sleep and. Uh, our ability to sense that we're full and our appetite the next day. Mm -hmm. So I've definitely experienced this, and I learned uh, learned you know more about it um, through getting healthy in the past three years. Um, but uh, there's a hormone, a couple of hormones that are affected. So it's actually a, it's not just a luxury to get you know seven right. to eight hours of sleep. Right. It's actually our physical health depends on it. Um, but we are much more apt to uh, be hungrier the next day if right. we have not gotten a good, a good night's sleep um, or the proper amount. I know about that exactly. I don't sleep well. I have insomnia. And um, I will tend to eat more um, to kind of calm myself down and not choose the right things. Um, but I do know, you know, sleep is very important to release those toxins from your spinal cord. And it's been a lot of studies been done with Alzheimer's and there's a lot of Alzheimer's patients that get, you know, sleep deprivation and they, they're not able to release those toxins from their spinal cord. That's really the new science that they're talking about and sleep is really what we need to be remain healthy and get rid of those toxins every mm -hmm. night. And um, you know, I used to always say like, why do we need sleep, you know? And um, I started looking into it because I wasn't getting any. <laughs> um, just one more thing that we'd like to just go over and um, just, you know, this has been very um, informative and I hope people enjoy this at home because, you know, you don't always get the luxury to learn all these things in one sitting, you mm -hmm. know? You kind of get different um, services, but having a certified lifestyle coach this is really all-encompassing of many different parts of your life, physical and mental, and um, I've really enjoyed it. You know, I've really learned a lot. Um, I'd like to ask you, um, you have a technique that can help us when we face temptations and moments of weakness. Right. Can you explain how that works? Yes, I'd be happy to. It's called Stop, Challenge, Choose, okay? The idea is to become more mindful of our choices. If we could just practice a pause mm -hmm. and not react right away, not get our hand you know, into that cereal box, um, but uh, to take a, to stop you know, before we dive in, to just stop ourselves and pause, go get a drink of water, 
And in that time that you're pausing and, and drinking some water, um, you have that, just that moment, to few moments to think about, is this gonna further my goals? Is this gonna help me? You know, am I gonna be happy? Um, you know, after this, mm -hmm. is this really going to help me achieve what I want? Mm -hmm. And uh, typically then, you know, the other part of your brain is going to kick in the rational side and is going to say, wait a second, no, that's not what I need to be doing now. Mm -hmm. the, the key is to have a number of other activities at the ready, you know, that you've thought of ahead of time, mm -hmm. um, you know, that you can divert yourself, distract yourself, and, you know, take yourself out of that room. You know, if it's probably the kitchen. You know, just, just walk, outside, walk, walk out of that room, you know, where you're going to be less triggered. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's, so you're stopping, you're challenging yourself, and then you're making a choice. Mm -hmm. um, but with more mindfulness, um, we hope that you would make a good choice uh, without, without that pause it's it's just so hard you know to break that um, response to that trigger right that cue right because I find myself um, I try to do something like that I just didn't know it, it was you know identified as a real thing <laughs> and um, when I thought that I was hungry when I really knew that I wasn't logically because I'd already eaten so I would remove myself from from the kitchen Good. and I do like to cook a lot too so that's kind of you know, I could whip something up really yummy and delicious, but wouldn't be good for me. So I take my water mm -hmm. and I drink and I say to myself, maybe I'm thirsty. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm going to make sure that I'm going to, you know, um, identify that and take care of that first and really think about, do I really need something else? You know, so those are, that's um, interesting because um, I do like mindfulness and this is really all about mindfulness and really you know being aware of what you're doing right you exactly know? right you know um, you know can you go take a walk around the block uh, can you busy your hands with um, a book you know can pick up a book uh, do some puzzles you know whatever whatever you like to do mm -hmm. knitting um, stress ball uh, put on a song yeah. Uh, you know, just move around, move around more. You know, start, start to dance. You know, yeah. uh, it would make you happy too. Yeah, just you know, um, Put and a when smile you on your face, <laughs> even if you're just dancing in front of your own self. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're getting more steps in then too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, right. It takes time and it it, it takes work to uh, change these habits yeah. and to really work on ourselves, but it's it's so worth it you know, to really have control, you know, too often our bad habits control us. Yes. And we need to exert control over them yeah. and uh, gain that control back. I feel like that. I've learned a lot today. I'm going to start one step at a time. And um, thank you so much for this information. It's been a, a great op mind opening thing for me. And um, I'm sure a lot of people at home they're really going to um, maybe look at this again mm -hmm. and take some notes, you know? Right, right. Sorry so we didn't get have time to get into the other habits, but, you know, maybe uh, well, you know, we'll, we'll do another show. <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely do another show. If And I want to thank you, Shayla. You've always been an inspiration to me and a mentor for me to heal from what happened to me. And if I didn't have Stop Healthcare Violence and be a part of that and also getting involved with Heal the Healer, um, I feel like we can all help people that have been through trauma, whether it's workplace violence or even any kind of violence or trauma that people have experienced. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Thank you. And thank you, Bless. Susie, for being here for me and for all the people out there that um, I don't think there's anyone that couldn't benefit from this. Thank right. you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Can you tell us um, a little bit of some information that would be helpful for the people to sure. kind of help themselves too? Absolutely. Uh, so th these are my three favorite books. Um, this is Dr. A's Habits of Health, written by a New York Times best-selling author, Dr. Wayne Anderson. Um, so that's a very good resource book. Um, Atomic Habits by James Clear, really great book. 
all about habits, and Unlocking Greatness by Charlie Harari. Um, I highly recommend all three of these books. And as well, uh, you can go on to habitsofhealth.com and uh, access free resources, articles, uh, tip sheets, and uh, charts to help you uh, with your habits. Oh, that's wonderful. Yep. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. That's absolutely amazing. You, you have said so many things that uh, are new, but yet old, and it never really listen to somebody to do the habits, the, yeah. the small meals, uh, the water. And you and I have talked about that as far as nurses, you know, they, they have to hide the water. And I shouldn't say that publicly. Right. But we, we help our patients, but we also have to help ourselves because right. we, you can't help someone unless you're, you're healthy too. And I, I, I got lost in that and I needed, I need this kind of help. Imagine if um, certified health lifestyle coaches worked with um, the medical team and the doctor and there'd be someone yeah. for a person to really talk to. A lot of patients don't have anyone to talk to once they get home from their illness on how to make themselves healthy, you right. know? So and this is really important. As healthcare workers, we're getting up every day or every night or whatever shift is and we're taking care of everybody else and it's one of our <coughs> bad habits that we don't take care of ourselves. Yeah. So, Susie, you're welcome to come back anytime. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, it would be a pleasure to have you. And Liz, I hope I see you next week when I'm doing another interview on somebody that has been assaulted. Yeah. And I just want to remind everybody, Stop Healthcare Violence. We have a website, stophealthcareviolence.org. And we also, I have written a book called the, the Shocking Reality of Violence in Healthcare and What We Can Do About It. And you can purchase that on Amazon if you choose to. And next week I'll be doing a, an interview with another nurse that has been assaulted. And we'll discuss more about the bills next week. Thank you so much. Thank you, Please. Sheila. Come thank back. You, Sue. Uh, thank you. I will. Thank you.